Hey guys, myself Omayyo Malik and today we are going to discuss Liouville's theorem. But before going to discuss Liouville's theorem, I want to mention some important topic which we have already done in our previous lectures, including phase space, ensemble theory and many others. So feel free to visit my playlist of statistical mechanics. Okay, let's discuss why we need Liouville's theorem. In statistical interpretation of thermodynamical system, the important question is that how to find an ensemble. And Liouville's theorem give the answer to our question. So Liouville's theorem tell us that how to form the ensemble of a system in equilibrium. And telling you guys about the history of Liouville's theorem, it was named after the French mathematician named known as Joseph Liouville. And one of the most important condition of the Liouville's theorem is that it applied to those system which applies, which follows Hamilton's equation. And we and you probably know the Hamilton's equation, which are q i dot is equal to partial h divided by partial p i, and the other is p i dot is equal to minus partial h divided by partial q i, where h is the Hamiltonian. So in Liouville's theorem, we are going to discuss equation of continuity. So let's first describe discuss that what equation of continuity describes. A, co a continuity equation describes the transport of some quantity. It is particularly simple and powerful when applied to conserved quantities, but it can be generalized to apply to any extensive quantity. Here, extensive property is the physical quantity whose value is proportional to the size of the system it describes, or to the quantity of matter in the system. Equation of continuity is the simply the law of conservation of the for the conserved quantities and for those quantities that are often but not always conserved, such as density. So according to law of conservation of energy, energy is locally conserved. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, and nor it can be teleport teleport from one place to another. It can move only by a continuous flow. A continuity equation is a mathematical way to express this kind of statements. Any continuity equation can be expressed in an integral form which applies to a finite region or it can also be expressed in differential form which applies at a point. So now we are going to state Liouville's theorem in statistical mechanics. The density of state in an ensemble of many identical systems which are identical in their macro states with different initial condition is constant along every trajectory in phase space. So now let's start our Liouville's theorem. This theorem is related to equation of continuity which is given by del dot rho v plus partial rho divided by partial t is equal to zero as shown in, as shown in front of you guys. Where rho is the density of fluid and v is the tangential velocity. And here delta dot rho v is the net rate of outflow of fluid. This equation was basically put forward for fluids but it has vast applications. So now let's discuss our three figures. From first figure we conclude that the if the net rate of outflow is positive then partial rho divided by partial t decreases or in other words we can say that density decreases. And from figure b we conclude that the if the net rate of outflow is negative then partial rho divided by partial t increases or we can say that density increases. And from figure C we conclude that if the net rate of outflow is equal to the inflow then the density will be constant. Now we know that the phase point due to change in position, momentum or time enters or leaves the volume element d sigma where d sigma is the hyper volume. A volume which, is, which consists of more than three dimensions. So we can apply equation of continuity on it. Since P is defined as P is the function of Q, P, T, where Q is position, P is momentum and T is time. 
where p is the probability of density or it is or it also known as distribution function now explain the question of continuity for phase point is partial p divided by partial t plus del dot p v is equal to 0 where p is the density of phase points and in our figure we can say we can see that the phase points entering or leaving the volume element d sigma where q and p space is called phase space and the volume element is called d sigma since we know that in three dimension the tangential velocity vector is given by v is equal to vx i unit vector plus vy j unit vector plus vz k unit vector and the del operator is given by a partial divided by a partial x i unit vector plus partial divided by a partial y j unit vector and partial divided by partial z k unit vector but in six n dimensional space it will be written as del operator will become del is equal to nq1 partial divided by partial q1 plus nq2 partial divided by partial q2 plus up to so on nq3n into partial divided by partial q3n which are with respect to position and with respect to momentum it becomes np1 partial divided by partial p1 plus np2 partial divided by partial p2 plus up to so on np3n into partial divided by partial p3n and our velocity tangential component becomes v is equal to nq1 v, vq1 plus nq2 vq2 plus up to so on nq3n into vq3n which are with respect to position and with respect to momentum it becomes np1 into vp1 plus np2 into vp2 plus up to so on np3n into vp3n now we simply multiply p on both sides so we get p v is equal to n q 1 p v p v q 1 plus up to so on n q v n q 3 n into p into v q 3 n which are with respect to momentum and similarly with respect to position which are with respect to position and similarly we define with respect to momentum now by applying del operator which we also call nebula operator or laplacian operator on the on this term we get del dot p v is equal to partial divided by partial q1 into p v q1 up to so on partial divided by partial q3 n into p v q3 n which are with respect to position and similarly with respect to momentum we can also write the above equation in the following form where i is from 1 to 3 n here vqi is equal to partial q divided by partial t which we can also write as qi dot and vpi is equal to partial pi divided by partial t which we can also write pi dot by putting the value of vqi and vpi in the above equation we get the following equation and by simply differentiating we get the following equation As we have already discussed that the Hamilton equation of motion in classical mechanics or partial h divided by partial pi is equal to qi dot and partial h divided by partial qi is equal to minus pi dot. Using these equation in our above equation we simply get delta dot pv is equal to summation where summation is from i is equal to 1 to 3 n is equal into p partial square h divided by partial qi into partial pi plus qi dot into partial p divided by partial qi minus p dot partial square h divided by partial pi into partial qi and the fourth term where the first and the second where first and the third term gets cancelled and we are simply left with qi dot into partial pi partial p divided by partial qi plus pi dot into partial p divided by partial pi putting this equation in our equation one which is partial p divided by partial t plus partial plus delta dot p v which is our equation of continuity for phase points the equation becomes partial p divided by partial t plus i is equal to 1 to 3 n qi dot partial p divided by partial qi plus pi dot into partial p divided by partial pi is equal to 0 
this equation of this is the equation of continuity of phase space of 6 and degree of freedom and this equation tell us the behavior of phase point in phase space this equation is called Lively's theorem which gives us the information that how an ensemble is made and this is our required relation so this was our lecture and we have discussed the first part of Lively's theorem and we are going to discuss our second part in the next lecture so see you guys Allah Hafiz